Well, hi guys, it's so great to be with you today as we continue in at the movie series. You know, have you ever been just sitting and relaxing and your mind starts to wonder, what's life all about, right? What's the purpose for me? What's a significant part of my life? Or maybe you've been sitting and you start to wonder, is there like a community, an authentic community I can be part of? Right? And so we muse over that place that you could find people to run with that would get you. You know, they would understand you. Well, listen, today, those questions are what you're going to see in the movie that we're going to feature. It's called The Peanut Butter Falcon, right? And so I'm going to share with you uh, some of those major themes that are brought out in that movie. But before we begin and look at that, let me just pray for you real quick, and uh, then we'll begin by jumping into the movie. All right, bow your heads with me. Father, I thank you. I thank you for your mercy and your kindness. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would help to uh, just show us the things you want us to see in our own lives, that we could use this modern-day parable to uh, impact us in a way that we would uh, be changed and we would be motivated, inspired to move forward into what you say. And so, Holy Spirit, just come now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, as I said, today is the day we're going to look at the peanut butter falcon. Yay, right? Now, this is a great, fun movie. It's an adventurous movie. It reminds me kind of like Mark Twain's novels, right? Only in a modern-day setting. And I absolutely love the scenery because it's all, it was all shot in the, the tidewater and the outer banks, you know, tidewater of Virginia and the outer banks here uh, at home, right? And so you're going to recognize some of the, uh, the scenery. It's pretty cool. Now, in this movie, Movie, what we find is that the star, which I call him the star uh, because he's really the one that makes this movie for me, is Zach. And Zach, his name over here, he's Zach Gossensing. I've never heard of him before. He is a person with Down syndrome. And so uh, he, in this movie, he plays uh, himself, right, in that condition of having the Downs. And he is placed by the state in a home, uh, an old folks' home, because I don't know where else to put him. And so he's trying to escape because Zach knows that he uh, has a dream inside of him to become a professional wrestler. And he just knows if he can escape, he can go down to Aiden, North Carolina, and down there is this school for wrestling, right, the uh, Saltwater uh, redneck <laughs> camp, and they help to develop, uh, they develop the uh, wrestlers, and so he wants to get down there. So he does finally escape from the old folks' home, and then in that process, he runs into another young man, Tyler, and Tyler is played, of course, uh, by Shay LaBeouf, right? And so what happens when we meet him is he is on the, the run, right, on the lamb, as they would say, because he's like a, a small town uh, crook or, you know, gangster type person. And so he's done some stuff, and so he's on the run, and he meets up with Zach, right? And uh, together, uh, Tyler becomes his mentor and his actually his advocate. Now, another character I need to introduce you to is Eleanor, which you see that the beautiful Eleanor right here. And uh, this is Dakota Johnson. And so she, she plays this Eleanor character who is a widower, right? She's a widower. And uh, she works in the old folks' home with Zach. And when he escapes, they send her, of course, to go find him and to bring him back, right? But the thing is that Eleanor gets caught up in the community with uh, Zach and with Tyler. And all three of them to our surprise, because they're so different, they all three begin to discover that family actually is the people that we choose, the friends we choose to do life with, right? And in there, they discover their significance uh, in, in the community of which they're going to live in. And so I want to encourage you today, as we go through, I want to point out two major themes that I feel like the Lord was highlighting for me. The first one is this whole question that we have about our significance, right? Our significance. And so what I want to first expose you to is that we need to discover the dream from within, right? And that's what happens in this movie clip that I'm about to show you, is Zach. Zach begins to identify the dream within and to talk about it. And in this scene, what you're going to see is Eleanor and his friend Carl, this is one of the senior residents, listening to Zach tell about his dream and, and understanding who and what God has called him. Watch this with me.
Wonderful, wonderful. So what you're seeing here is that Zach is identifying the, the dream that's in his heart, right? And I believe there's a principle there for you and I. And it's that God places, God places a dream within our hearts. And we need to figure out what that dream is, right? You see, God designs us in a certain way, and we need to discover what the calling is, what, what the uh, purpose of our life is. And so when I look at this, I am reminded of the scriptures that talk to a young prophet named uh, Jeremiah, right? And God says that he had formed Jeremiah in the womb, watch this, and made him, uh, set him apart specially. He says, I, know you be I knew you before I formed you. In your mother's womb, before you were born, I set you apart. Now, the important thing here for us to recognize, it's not just for Jeremiah, it's for us. That God does that. He oversees uh, being knit to together in our mother's womb and that he has a calling on our life, right? Now, the world would tell, tell us that, uh, that our calling has to measure up what they call normalcy, what they call good, right? But you see, when we step back from that, when we refuse to buy into the culture and we actually look at how God has uh, developed us, right? Just like Zach did. You know, what's that call? What's that thing that's in his heart that he wants to do? Well, when we do that, then we begin to discover the dream that God has placed in our hearts. And we begin to understand that God has something for us. Now, it's not just enough to discover that we have this gift inside, right? That we have a dream, the purpose of our life. But we also then begin to have to discover that. And so we see that happening. And that's the next thing I want to talk to you about is developing the dream. You and I need to develop the dream. That's what happened with Zach. In this next clip, I want to show you how he is befriending um, Tyler and that he's sharing who he is with Tyler. And this clip that I just showed you is where it dawns on Zach that if he wants to achieve his dream, he's going to need to have a mentor, have somebody to train him, and watch how he reaches out to the person around him to ask for that. And then we'll come back and talk. Hey, isn't that interesting? We see where uh, Zach is willing to step up, right, to help his friend. I mean, Zach, or Tyler's willing to step up and to help Zach, his friend, right? Even though Tyler has, has, doesn't know a whole lot about wrestling, he's willing to come alongside of him and to help him. And I know for some of you, you go, well, that's great, but I don't have anybody like that in my life. Well, I want to challenge you with a thought. I think you do. Let me show you here in Scripture, right? We need to cultivate, the responsibility is ours, that we need to cultivate inside of us this dream. Now we'll look at this scripture in John 14. But the helper, right, the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that he has said to you. And what I want you to do here is to see that you do have an advocate. You do have a mentor, right? I mean, I've had lots of mentors in my life. 
and they've been great. But there's none like the Holy Spirit. There's nobody like the Holy Spirit for mentoring us. Why? Well, because he made us. He knows who we are, right? He knows how he knit us together. And so he gets us better and understands us more than any person on earth can. And so he makes the best mentor there is. I think he's the best. And so here the key then is how do I, how do I begin to work with the Holy Spirit? How do I begin to identify who he is so that I can let him mentor my life? Well, you know how I do it, how I have cultivated that in my life, is that I have decided to set a time aside each day to go and to read God's word and to talk with him, right? And to journal what I feel like he's telling me. You know, in that process, I begin to realize the voice of the Holy Spirit. I don't consider myself that smart or that gifted, but you know what? I do know this, that anybody can learn to identify where the Holy Spirit is. And when we uh, have a, a life of obedience to follow where the Holy Spirit is, that's where spiritual wisdom gets released. And I want to encourage you that as you're doing that, it's counterintuitive because you're thinking, I'm not really developing my call, my dream, but you are. You see, when I gave all that time to the Lord, what he did inside of me helped me to fulfill my calling in life. And he'll do the same for you, right? So what we're seeing in this movie clips that we've been watching, the first theme that we've tackled is that of significance. To recognize that God has indeed put a, a dream in our heart and that he not only put the dream in our heart, but it's our responsibility to cultivate it. The next thing that I want to look at that I see as an underlying, um, an underlying theme in this movie is the quest to find uh, authentic community. Where do I fit in? And that's the next thing we're going to look at here. Uh, where do I belong? And so one of the interesting things in looking at that that I've seen in the movie is something that we talk about often in Growth Track. You know, how do you find authentic community? Well, it has these component parts of being connected together, protecting uh, each other, and then growing. And so I see that in this movie that I've been watching, and I want to show it to you, right? So the first one is connecting together. So let me show you this first clip, and the connecting is between Tyler and Zach, right? You know, Tyler thinks he's so different than Zach, but all of a sudden, as they're doing life together, Tyler begins to realize that Zach and him are more alike than they are different. Take a look at this, and then we'll come back and talk about it. <laughs> Isn't that a cool handshake that they, they, get, they develop there, right? You see that connection piece, what happens here is in the quest to find authentic community that uh, we just want to be connected with other people, right? That people that get us, right? That they understand us. And that actually, when, when Zach uh, connected with Tyler, that becomes the foundation of their friendship from the, that point on in the movie, right? And so we need people like that in our lives. 
And you might be thinking, well, I just don't have anybody like that that I, that I can connect with. Well, let me show you where it all begins here through Scripture. Okay, In Hebrews 4, 15 and 16, it says this, For we do not have a high priest, which is talking about Jesus Christ, who is unable to sympathize, get us, with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way that we are, yet, watch this, because it's just like us, yet was without sin. Now, knowing this and connecting with that, look what happens, what gets produced. Let us then approach the throne of grace with what? Confidence, right? And so this connecting that happens, when we connect vertically, right, with the Father, what happens is we're able to connect horizontally with people. And so we see this principle for application in our lives that says, connect with Christ and others. This is going to be important. If you connect with the Father, then you connect with others. Now, if you feel far and disconnected from, from your Father God, right? Today, at the end of my time with you and my message, uh, I'm going to close by asking you to come home, to come and be reconnected or to connect for the first time. I believe that's why God has you watching this, this video today. So I've been praying for you to make that connection with him. Everything stems out of that connection. We are able to connect with others. Authentic community requires connection with God and with others. The second thing I noticed that happened here in this movie was that we are, uh, when we're finding where do we belong, that connection, that authentic community, that we have a protection element, protecting each other, right? And so we see that again in this movie. What happens here in this next scene, as I set it up for you, is that Eleanor... Uh, Tyler and Zach are all asleep in a shed, and uh, what happens here is that some bad people, Duncan and his sidekick, which is called Rat Boy, they actually find Tyler. They've been looking for Tyler because Tyler, in his anger, he uh, burnt down Duncan's uh, business, right? And so now Duncan wants revenge. And so I want you to watch how this unfolds, and then we'll come back and talk about it. Wow. Did you see how Zach stood up for Tyler? You know, Zach wasn't around when, when Tyler had his anger overtake him and that he destroyed this man's property. But Zach knew that it wasn't right for them to take revenge on, on Tyler. And so he stands up for him. It's pretty remarkable, isn't it? You know, I'm, I'm amazed at how uh, this movie portrays our sins, things that we've done in the past, how they get played over and over again like a broken record in our lives, right? That, that they actually uh, come back to, to bite us. <laughs> That's what I say, right? You know those places where you've caused problems with people or you let somebody down or you were unfaithful? You walked out on somebody who was counting on you? 
You know those places that you've, you've made some wrong decisions? They kind of replay themselves, don't they? They come back and they, they can haunt us. And so I want to encourage you that, that there is a place, there is a person that will be there to protect you and help you to let those things go, right? And we see that in Scripture in John 3, 16, where it says, we know what real love is because Jesus gave up his life for us. So we also ought to give up our lives for our brothers and sisters. And so all those regrets, all those things that we did, Jesus Christ takes them all when we give them to him and he nailed them to the cross with himself so that we can be free. And once we understand that, that's when we can go and love other people. That's when you can protect other people and forgive them, right? And so this will be an important thing for us to understand that our protection is in Christ, our Savior. That's where the protection comes. And as we embrace that, then we can begin to protect others. Okay, so the first two parts that we see in making this authentic community was the connection together, was the protecting of each other, and this last one over here that I want us to look at is growing together, that we begin to grow. When we have an authentic community, community like that, we begin to grow, right? And so we grow in a couple of ways. I want to show you some of them. The first one is that we grow by finding freedom, we grow by finding freedom, right, from those past things that hold us down. And so, again, I want to encourage you that uh, finding freedom is coming to terms with the things that happen to us in our lives. And so this next clip I'm going to show you is where uh, Tyler and Zach have been on, a, uh, they're on one of their journeys, and they run into an older gentleman, black gentleman, and his name was Jasper, and he was deeply spiritual. And in their um, interchange, what happens is Tyler is remembering the sadness and grief that he had over his brother's death, which uh, Tyler was part of because they were out drinking and they got into a car accident and his brother died. And so he's got that down in his soul. And so Jasper helps him to identify that and it gets brought up. And as they're drifting down on this raft, I want you to watch how the simple words of Zach in the authentic community makes a difference and helps Tyler be set free. Take a look at this. Wow, he found freedom. Actually, this scripture here is what I see taking place. A friend is always loyal, and a brother, like Zach is to Taylor, is born to help in the time of need. You know, that's what authentic community does. It helps uh, somebody be able to achieve freedom from things that hold them back, right? You know what else I see in this authentic community uh, that people are growing is we have this personal growth that starts to ha happen here, right? A personal transformation. And this time, I'm going to show it to you in Eleanor, right? Remember, Eleanor uh, is now in this journey with the guys. And so Eleanor, because she's uh, experiencing community, right, that they're opening her mind up to all the possibilities that are out there, not just the ones that have been presented to her, but she begins to expand her understanding of what things could be. And so watch this clip, and then we'll come back and talk about it.
Okay, did you see how her mind got expanded there, right? Yeah, the possibility of something that she hadn't thought about before now becomes a reality. It's this scripture here uh, that iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. It was Tyler, right? It was uh, his influence and also Zach's and the community they had that Eleanor gets sharpened to the possibility that there's something else. I think that's what God wants to do with us. He wants to have in this uh, authentic community that we are part of, different ideas and thoughts start to happen. Now, my last thing I want to show you with growth that I'm so uh, loving that happens in community is this last point here, which is the release of the dream. The release of the dream. That's right. When we're in authentic community, part of the growth is to release the dream into actually being. Okay, and so I want to show you this last video clip, video clip seven. And in here, what I want you to see is that indeed, Zach is going to get a chance to act out his dream, right? That to be a professional wrestler uh, down in Aden. And so what we're going to see here is that he gets in the ring to fight, uh, you know, somebody who's three times as big as he, he is and stuff. But what I want you to note here, right? Uh, that his name now is called Peanut Butter Falcon, right? Because he has now arisen to his dream that he's going to uh, play out here. And uh, I want you to watch how Tyler is right there with him to help him, encourage him in his dream. Watch this. Okay, my goodness, right? Did you see that? You know, that big throw like that? You know, that's called the atomic throw. And earlier in the movie, we're told that that really can't happen. That's all smoke and mirrors. But yet, Zach is able to do it, right? Why? Because somebody believed in him. He could do the impossible. Isn't that what Jesus says with us? He says, everything is possible for him who believes, And so there's this element of faith that we walk in, and the community, the authentic community around us, not only do they help us to discover the dream, they help us to walk in faith to release the dream. And so today in our movie, what you've seen, if you've seen the heart cries of most people that are embedded in this movie, you know, who am I? What's my existence? What's my purpose? What's the dream that's inside of me? And then we see this starving uh, need to belong to an authentic community. That in reality, we can't be who we are if we don't have this community around us, right? A place to connect with people, a place to protect, be protected and to protect others, and a place to release the dream, the faith to walk it out. Guys, I believe that God wants to use this movie to talk to you, to challenge you, This is our modern-day parable. Bow your heads with me, and I'm going to pray. Thank you, Father. Holy Spirit, I just thank you for uh, developing each and every one that heard this prayer, Father. Yes, I believe that you've appointed them here, Lord, because you want to talk with them. And so, Holy Spirit, just come right where they're at right now. Yes, So those of you, first of all, that are far from God or you don't feel connected to him, I'm going to start right here with you 
because you can't move forward unless you have that connection. Nothing really makes sense without that connection to the Father. And it happens through the Lord Jesus Christ. So right now, right where you're at, everybody's praying. And they're praying for those of you making this decision. I've made that decision. It's the most important decision of my life. Right where you're at, you just say, Father God. Go ahead. You just say, Father God. I don't understand everything. But the best of my ability, I'm coming home. I'm coming to you. I want to connect with you. And so I accept your son, Jesus Christ, as my Savior. And Jesus, I ask you to forgive me for my sins. All those places I made the wrong move, the people I've hurt, the things I've done. Jesus, forgive me. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. And Jesus, I ask now that you become the leader of my life, that you're my CEO, that you direct the rest of my life from this day forward. Okay. So those that were praying that, I thank you, Father, that you seal that prayer in their heart and that you say in your word that you write their name in the book of life. I thank you for them, Father. And I lift them up to you along with all that were watching this video today. And I ask, Holy Spirit, that you would do the miraculous in their lives, that you would begin to call out the dream that you've placed in their heart, just like Jeremiah's. Yes, I see that. Just like Jeremiah, that you developed that in the womb before they were even seen by the world. And so I ask, Holy Spirit, that you would call that out, that dream out in them right now, no matter what their age is, no matter what their position in life, that you begin to call it out, Father, that they would begin to recognize it. And Father, that you would empower them to be able to, 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 uh, to cultivate it, to find the people around them, to help them, Lord, to develop it. And Father... You tell us that we were not meant to be by ourselves. And so, Father, for every person that is listening today, I ask, Father, that you would burn in their heart, that they would begin to have the hunger to want to be an authentic community, that they would begin, Father, today looking for that connection with others and that ability to protect each other, Father, and to lift each other up before you, and that the release of the dream that you are showing them will begin to happen. Father, even in this day, in this time of COVID, where people are isolated, I ask that you would do the miraculous and that you would bring the community, Father, together, this authentic community, that we could find and fulfill what you have for us. Now, Lord, all these things are possible only through you. And so I give you this prayer. I give you those folks who are listening. And we thank you, Jesus, for your answer as we sit and wait for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, guys. Well, for those of you that did pray with me to accept Christ for the first time or rededicate your life, I want you to tell me about it, right? You can uh, go to this text number right here, 757-704-5504. And in there, you can just put, no God. And that'll come to us, and then we'll shoot you back a reply, okay? Or if you're uh, thinking, you know, I I've got some other things I'd like some prayer about, you can just type in your prayer. And again, it'll come to us, and we'll begin to pray for you. Now, guys, what's happening here at Vineyard is remarkable, the people that we're touching and the things that God is doing is just off the chain. And so if you want to be a part of that with us, we'd love to have you, right? And so I want to encourage you, if you want to uh, be a, a partner with us, that you can uh, give in the following ways. First, if you're on the Vineyard Live, you can just hit that Give button, right? And then that'll help you. But if you'd like to text us also at 45777, Put in VCC in the amount that you'd like to give, and that'll come. Uh, and, and if all that is too confusing, right, you can just go to, to the uh, vineyardchurch.com, right? That's our website, and it'll, it'll prompt you how you can give. Hey, guys, it's been a pleasure to be with you today. Um, and I just I think that God's got you in a place where he wants to do marvelous things for you, that he wants to show you uh, the purpose for your life, and that he wants to, to put others around you to help you fulfill it. I hope today that you'll take him up on that. 
See you next week.